So just a quick tutorial today. Uh, we're going to upgrade an SSD in this Razer Blade Stealth 13 laptop. The reason I want to upgrade it is simply to get more storage capacity. Some of the games nowadays can take up so much space that it fills up rather quickly. So this computer comes with 512 gigabyte SSD which gives the user about 465 to four, maybe 470 gigabytes of uh, accessible storage. And I have GTA 5 installed on here. That takes up almost 100 gigs. I have uh, Borderlands 3 and that game is like 80 gigs and just a couple other games. And another day I tried to install Assassin's Creed Valhalla and I realized I only left me with like 20 gigs of space so i simply want to double it from 512 gigabytes to one terabyte and uh, for this project we're going to need your victim or i mean your computer a new ssd that you're putting in there you're going to need to decide how you want to actually transfer your operating system to a, a new disk so for me I'm going to just go ahead and do a clean install, so a flash drive with Windows image already downloaded to it, a screwdriver, and this is a D5 uh, screwdriver, and a Swiss Army knife, or rather any knife if you have packaging to open. So before I begin, um, I want to quickly talk about the Windows installation media, if that's the route you want to take. There are some downsides to that. Um, you're probably going to lose, most likely going to lose your recovery partition access because there won't be one from Razer. The second thing, you need to go ahead and make sure to create this media before you do this whole project, especially if this is your only computer. So just Google Windows 10 media creation tool, download it directly from Microsoft and go ahead and uh, create your thumb drive with Windows image on it. So I decided to just go ahead and uh, uh, go with Western Digital this time. Uh, I could do a Samsung drive, but uh, this one is about $15 cheaper with uh, very similar specs. Maybe slightly slower, but it's not something that anyone should really notice in day-to-day -day use. Obviously, Here's where the knife comes in. A quick unboxing. There's not much to it. Modern NVMe SSDs are easy to work with. Uh, it's a tiny little thing. I'm gonna put it aside for now. Okay, I would say the difficulty level for this project is about moderate. Replacing the drive itself is pretty easy. I think the difficulty might come in at the point when you're going to decide how you want to set up your new operating system. If you want to clone your drive, uh, if you have another computer, for example, my desktop has an extra M.2 slot and I could probably use that to clone a drive, but I don't want to clone it. Or you can use a dock for that, that you can have two drives going in and then just kind of clone one to another. Samsung has its own uh, cloning software that works with their drives. So there are many different options, but that's sort of up to find a user to decide what they want to do. I'm kind of taking what I think is an easier route and I'm just going to go ahead and do a fresh install of Windows 10. I know I'm going to lose that recovery partition. I might have to manually get some drivers installed, we'll see. I believe it should be pretty smooth in 2020. There's not much to it. I wish Razer just offered their recovery image for download, but they don't. I think if you really want to save that recovery partition and have the official Razer image, uh, you can buy a thumb drive from Razer with recovery uh, image already on it and install your windows from that. So let's go to part two of this video. And I apologize for the smudges. 
on the device, it's a little bit hard to keep it, uh, to keep this one clean. In order just to save some time, I already removed most of the screws here, but basically you're going to start with opening up the back of your device and there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 screws. So uh, T5 is the screwdriver that we need for this. So just get all 10 out. With this machine, there's no, uh, there are no clips inside, nothing like that. Once you remove the screws, the back will just come right off. The first time I was taking it off, uh, it was stuck a little bit. There was some resistance to it. And I'll show you in a second why. So you might just have to go ahead and give it just a little bit of, of force, but you know, definitely not too much. It should come right up. So the reason it's doing that, I think, is because of this uh, this pad here. It's kind of sticky and that goes on top of the SSD. Um, that's it. So the back comes up right off. There's not much in this machine that can be upgraded by the user. Uh, you can replace a Wi-Fi card, technically, if you want to. Uh, your SSD, and that's really about it. Now, it is recommended to unplug the battery if you have the... Uh, if you have access to it. Um, so, and obviously, this is not... This instruction is not only going to work for this laptop, but pretty much any model of a uh, razor blade stealth and also will most likely be the same with the new razor book 13. So unplug your battery and now you're ready to just go ahead and remove your old drive. And there's a little sticker here, power off before operation. Okay. So there's a tiny sticker that was covering the uh, uh, screw for an SSD. So we're going to need to get a different uh, attachment for a screwdriver here. And this is just a Phillips screw, so that's why I have to replace it. Try a different size. Here it goes. Yeah, if you get the right size, it shouldn't be hard. So just unscrew that. And it comes right up. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that sticker there. And then you just pull this right out, just like that. Take our new drive. Stick it in there, gently push it down, and put the screw back in. Yeah, this is really the easiest part. That's it. You don't need a lot of force. Let me see if I can put this tiny little sticker back on there. Yeah, just why not, if I can. there okay so that's uh that's it for the hardware part here we go you might have noticed um i didn't put the back on yet and that's on purpose um i'm just want to make sure everything works so obviously <laughs> one thing you don't want to forget about is to plug your battery back in um although if you connect your power cable It'll probably still start, but I haven't tried that and yeah, I'm not going to. Okay, so get your battery plug back in. It's easy to do. Here we go. All right, so yeah, as you can see, the back is not on there. Um, I just want to make sure the new drive works and if it does, then that's when we're going to put the battery back on. Let's go ahead and uh, plug in our installation drive here. And I'm actually just 
to be safe, make sure there's no corruption or anything, and the battery doesn't die in the middle of it, I'm gonna plug in the power cable. So, one of the options there was recovery option. That's not gonna work if you do uh, a clean Windows 10 install. Simply because there is no recovery partition um, will be on this drive. So, by the way, while it's sitting here, we can take a look at the uh, um, the drive that was in a computer. Light on technology corporation. Seems pretty basic, you know, green board. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold on to this, keep it in the box from the new drive. Um, and if I decide to sell this computer later or I need to send it for service or anything, I can always put the original drive back in there. So just like that, see the installation came up. See, there are some challenges you might run into. Uh, if you see some of the hardware is not working, have a backup ready. So I have the mouse here and it works. Another cool thing with Windows 10, you don't have to worry about serial numbers or keys. It's just stored inside a computer and uh, just go ahead and install Windows. It will activate automatically once you go online. Yeah, and um, as you go through your installation, you will notice that will show your drive as an allocated space all 931 and a half gigabytes of it. So that's how it comes new, fresh out of the box. You're going to need to go ahead and create new um, partition. I'm going to do it for the full size, but it's going to make a couple of uh, system partitions automatically. So again, pretty easy, but that's kind of step that you need to make sure to take care of. So as you can see, created a couple extra partitions here. One is 60 megabytes, one is 100 megabytes. That's just for Windows 10, leaving us with uh, our main partition here. And that's where Windows is going to be installed. One other thing while it's installing, a tip. Not a pro tip because I'm not a pro. I'm just a regular user, so I often overlook things, forget about things. But as long as we figure them out as we go together, I think it's all good. So, as you saw a second ago, the way my computer was sitting on the soft pad here. It's probably not ideal to run it this way. Uh, I noticed the fan starts spinning real hard and I quickly realized that that's because it's not actually getting any airflow. It's the back was off and the fans were just sitting right against the, the soft pad here. So it started heating up, it started spinning up. It only took probably 30 seconds for me to hear the fans just starting to go crazy and that's when I decided that, yeah, uh, let me just lift it up, put the bag under it, put it on it. See, it's not screwed or anything, but it raises up as it's supposed to and leaves that openings for the uh, airflow. So for the fans to get some air into the system. Yeah, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. It just finished uh, the main installation part. And let's continue with a setup. It was actually really quick. Uh, it took less than two minutes, maybe maybe just a little over two minutes, sorry, but less than three minutes for sure to do this whole Windows 10 installation. And, and this new uh, NVMe drives are really fast, really fast. While it's doing this thing real quick, the reason I decided to go with Western Digital this time again it was a little bit cheaper than Samsung. The performance is similar from all the reviews and comparison that I look. And then I saw this drive and it says gaming NVMe SSD, NVMe SSD gaming. So it repeats the same thing twice in different order. <laughs> I thought it must be twice as good for gaming. This is a gaming laptop, so why not? Now, that's obviously a joke. There's only this and Samsung drives that Best Buy carries. And I wanted it today, so I wanted to save a couple bucks. Basically, yeah, that's why we're doing Western Digital. Uh, I use a Samsung. 
Evo 970 Plus in my desktop. Very happy with it. Hi yeah. there, I'm Cortana and I'm here to help. Okay, I have to stop for a second here. I originally planned on going with um, fresh Windows install and that's what I attempted to do. And to be honest, it did work. Windows installed, activated, and um, everything was fine until I was, uh, you know, while I was setting up everything and drivers and uh, uh, downloading updates, I realized that my touchpad still didn't work. So I went to troubleshoot that and I was looking at some forum threads online and kind of learned that it's um, it's not so easy to get this uh, Razer Blade Stealth uh, touchpad to work. There's not like a driver you can download. Uh, uses precision drivers and something with Windows Update messing up. Finally, I decided that it's kind of more trouble trying to get it to work than it's worth. So I just went back and figured I'll try uh, a clone disk route. And uh, I did just that. I used the... Uh, extra M.2 port on my desktop motherboard and I insert the original drive created uh, an image backup of it and then restored it to a new drive and that worked flawlessly I got everything just the way it was I didn't have to do any setup everything works it works fast I have doubled the storage now I went from around 465 gigabytes to 935 gigabytes or so and uh, they allowed me to basically start getting more stuff like the Forza 7 which I simply didn't have room for before this game takes over 100 gigs on your hard drive so kind of in conclusion a couple of lessons they'll learn here and I always glad to do this uh, kind of for the benefit of whoever might be watching this video I want to make mistakes so you don't have to so you can see what's the easier and uh, more efficient route for you to take. Lesson one, for operating system, yes, you can do a, a clean Windows install. And yes, you can still get it to work. You can get your uh, trackpad to work too. It just uh, takes a little bit of time and research and kind of messing around. So you, you might or might not want to do that. Uh, feels like a silly issue to have. Everything, literally everything worked flawlessly except for the trackpad or touchpad or whatever. So if you want to avoid that and if you have an ability to do so, uh, clone your disk. So there are actually several ways you can do that. If you don't have a dock or enclosure for your new disk, there are some uh, applications that allow you to create like a bootable flash drive with an image of your disk that you can then install your new disk. And instead of installing your operating system from um, a flash drive, you just restore an image of your previous SSD from the flash drive. That sounds like an easy enough way to go if you have a big enough flash drive to do so. Um, I didn't. So in my case, I just used my desktop PC and a couple of pieces of software to create an image backup. And it's pretty much the same process as cloning a disk. It's just instead of copying from... Uh, one disk to next, you first copy it from your disk to your computer and then you go from your computer to your new disk and then of course you install a new di disk in uh, your laptop and you're good to go. This works if you have an, another computer you can use and you can use with an M.2 slot of course. So if you don't you might have to do some research and um, figure out what will work for you. Just for reference, the software that I use was uh, Macrium Reflect. That's the uh, application I used to create an image backup and restore to a new drive. So Reflect, um, there's a free 30 day trial. That's what I used to work fine. And then um, right after that, the new image on the one terabyte drive was still of that 512 gigabyte drive. So it was half. Uh, the partition was half of the capacity of the drive, so there was still about half a gigabyte, or sorry, half a terabyte of unallocated space. So I used AOME Partition Assistant, which is a free software too, 
uh, to go ahead and merge that unallocated space with the C drive and get that full capacity um, of the drive. And uh, second lesson I learned that you don't want to run your laptop on any kind of soft surface without the, <laughs> the bottom cover on because it will quickly overheat and um, uh, you know they can be in trouble. The third lesson, then the project is not hard, but could be a little bit involved. So there is definitely more information out there, especially in the forums. Putting the physical drive in the computer is the easy part. Uh, setting up your software with your new drive and operating system, that's the part that might be challenging somewhat. I used it for about two days since I did the swap. I haven't had any issues at all. It's been fast. It's been reliable. I would say I do recommend this drive, Western Digital. It's not a review, but it's a SSD drive. It's fast enough for me. And I'm guessing that being gaming, NVMe SSD, NVMe SSD gaming, as they say there, makes it twice as good for gaming. There is actually software you can download from Western Digital that has a gaming mode for your SSD. I've never seen that before. I enabled it. I have no idea what the difference is, but it's there. Thanks for watching. I hope it helps. If you have any questions, ask below. As you can see with my other videos, I try to reply to every comment I get.